All right, folks, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Let's go ahead and get airborne with our uh, solo Amazon brief. Happy uh, post-Oscars uh, Monday morning, man. <laughs> Just Oscars viewership, like down to the lowest it's ever been in their history. And then Will Smith gets up on stage and assaults Chris Rock. I, You know, that's just – and then, you know, doesn't get arrested. Imagine if you storm the stage and smack somebody in the face. Just a weird – just a weird place, man. Planet Hollywood is just a very, very strange place. You got kids getting blown into pieces in Ukraine, and we got – we got that stuff going on uh, in in Hollywood, and then of course you know taking to Twitter today. <clears throat> that's of what everybody's talking. The only thing anybody's talking about, um, and all the uh, Twitter legal scholars, right? Well, Chris Ro or yeah, what's his name? Chris Rock didn't press charges, so you know they didn't do anything. That's not kind of how the law works, <laughs> right? And prosecutor, police officers, like I just witnessed a crime. Doesn't matter if the victim. Uh, doesn't want to testify if you have evidence of a crime. Is is that is that how we work now? And then let's just <clears throat> let's go a little bit further. The reason I think like half the internet or who knows what the ratio is is like okay with what happened last night because of all the the blue check marks, you know, with their words hurt. Right? Now now we're at a point in our country where words are violence, right? Words hurt. So it's it's just this this boiled frog that we're, we have in this country, just kind of just keep turning everything up until, you know, it's it, it cracks me up. Anyway, I can't not talk about it. Driving to the hangar this morning, I'm like, oh my God, is there anywhere I can like tune to where I don't see this? And then you get onto this webinar and then we talk about it. We're done. All right, let's go ahead and get airborne. Uh, silence your electronic nicotine. Of course, that airplane's doing a run up outside the hangar. I apologize for that. It'll only be a couple minutes or so. Um, Anyway, uh, silence your electronic nicotine. You've never heard what I'm about to tell you, man. This is, uh, I love doing solo Amazon. We do it maybe once a quarter. We usually do it after uh, our full throttle uh, quarterly launch just because some folks might not have time or to, uh, the wallet share to do full throttle and maybe want to check us out here uh, and what we do here at Top Gun. Exactly. Joe Biden's words are going to hurt us. They're potentially going to start World War III. W what an absolute incredible couple days joe biden had in europe it's it's insane the man made four major gas from hey when you guys get inside ukraine you'll see this what putin uses chemical weapons we're going to respond in kind do you know what those words we're going to do a chemical attack we need regime this guy can't stay in power in russia i mean you can't so the White House, for the past five days, has walked back everything the president has said. Who's running the United States of America? Apparently, the White House is running the United States of America, not the president. You guys awake yet? You, you paying attention to that, right? Well, no, the president uh, didn't mean to say that. What he meant is he, 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 he like said it. I have I have five decades of foreign policy experience. You suck. I mean, the whole regime change thing, guys, is absolutely insane. It's absolutely insane. I, I can't. I can't. And then for months, san sanctions, the threat of sanctions is going to prevent the invasion. I never said that. Kamala, Secretary of State, Pisaki, National Security Advisor. It's an absolute shit show, folks. But anyway, let's get and get airborne. Solo Amazon. We call it trading the Death Star because it's the only stock you need to ever trade again in your life. Take a look at Amazon today. 3400 bucks. Ain't no war. Ain't no inflation. We don't care about the Fed. Here we come with Amazon. Uh, just an absolute Death Star. Looks like it got half blown up. Uh, and it's back, man. This is absolutely um, insane movement in uh, Amazon stock, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, at, here at the airport, I'm actually going to do a 1v1. What's a 1v1 mean? A one versus one dogfight later in the afternoon. Uh, get my Monday afternoon dogfight on. Uh, so actually at the hangar this morning. Uh, so a little bit of an aviation theme. I know we have a lot of people who are new to the Topkin Options uh, kind of family because uh, some of my strategic partners sent out some 
marketing for this event and not only for this event for full throttle so welcome aboard uh, top gun options if you have no idea who i am you're going to find out uh quick question to start the brief which fighter aircraft would you uh rather fly this one which almost kind of looks like the jet i'm going to fly take a look at that cockpit real quick take a look at that cockpit now as an f-18 hornet fighter pilot this slide right here gives me agita it makes my heart rate go up because this is insane over 300 switches and dials in that cockpit over 300 very labor intensive aircraft right matter of fact so labor intensive they threw another dude in the airplane in the back seat just to run the radar and the radios man obviously the pilot would spend a lot of what we call heads down time looking at all of this stuff instead of eyeballs out of the cockpit looking for enemy MiGs, surface air missiles, or AAA, uh, any aircraft artillery. Very labor-intensive uh, aircraft. We actually have a couple members here at Top Gun Options that flew this aircraft. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, or this one. Take a look at that cockpit. Two flat panel displays. Ain't one steam gauge in that cockpit. Two flat panel displays. Folks, this is the F-35, the Lightning II, the joint strike fighter man this jet is so advanced we call it the wonder woman jet it's actually invisible to radar and the jet is kind of creepy why because it kind of decides you know what i don't need to show the pilot this at this portion of the flight i got this it actually limits the amount of information that's displayed to the pilot and to creep you out even more the aircraft are learning they're learning what all the pilots are doing when they fly, where they look, what the, when they scratch their nose, everything, and they're getting very smart. So this is the F-35 Lightning. Why do I make this a choice? Because we're going to make a point here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you want to fly. It's freaking Darth Vader. Speaking of Darth Vader, take a look at the helmet. Now, my, my old F-18 helmet is sitting up there on the top of our uh, flight equipment rack, and it looks like shit. I've dropped it on the flight deck. I've hit my head. I mean, I remember when I flew Hornets out of Naval Air Station Fort Worth, uh, across the taxiway from us was Lockheed, right? That's where they were building all the stuff. And when I went flying one day, me and a buddy were going flying, doing a 1v1 like I'm doing today. And there was a bunch of booger eaters in the paraloft, right? Where we get dressed. They had their clipboards and their glasses with the band-aid in the middle and their slide rule and they're standing there watching us get dressed i grab my helmet i hate like hit the door they're like <gasps> like what the hell's wrong with you people got out to the jet i hung my helmet on the uh the missile launcher on the wingtip they're like freaking out i get back and my buddy who uh, was working part-time at lock he's like dude nice job i'm like what are you talking about he's like you just made another job in the air force in the navy there's like a helmet dude or a helmet lady meaning that helmet's about five hundred thousand dollars seven hundred fifty thousand dollars the pilot like walks out to the aircraft and when they sit in the aircraft the helmet's like handed to them because they see how pilots handle the flight equipment so that was me uh so by lockheed uh martin stock uh because i dropped my helmet a couple times and freaked people out all right my promise by the end of this brief, you're going to be up to date with what's going on uh, as far as intelligence or not intelligence going on uh, in the world. Uh, hang on here. Whenever I get a text from my mastermind group, I always read it because I want to see what is going on. Okay, that's kind of master of the obvious. Okay, never mind. Uh, what's going on up to date? The only stock you need to know, own and a good substitute to trade. We put on a trade last week. I'm going to give you a couple of trades today. I'm going to give you a free trade that we did last week. Let me get a hell yeah if in last week's solo Amazon brief you got long XLY. Take a look at the XLY right now. The XLY is absolutely crushing it. Um, so. Good substitute to trade. If you don't know me, folks, welcome aboard. My name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign's Wiz, F-18 pilot, Top Gun graduate, which many, uh, which you guys call Top Gun. We call it the Navy Navy Fighter Weapons School. Uh, was a bad guy. I was an adversary pilot, meaning uh, I flew bad guy tact, kind of like the in the movie Top Gun, Viper and and Jester. Uh, we had jets that were painted like enemy MIGs, and I went out and flew bad guy uh, tactics and flew bad guy missiles and kind of was a bad 
a good bad guy and then uh, flew over Iraq as well. What's it have to do with trading? Everything, folks. Trading is a form of combat. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to get their ass handed to them. Which one of those do you want to be? It's kind of common sense, right? So uh, started, you, you know, you, you don't join the Navy to get rich. Clearly, you don't join the Navy to get rich. You join the Navy to serve your country, your fellow man, your fellow uh, woman, your fellow uh, American. Uh, but was always interested in finance in the background. Started investing at a very young age, 1991. I was 21, whatever. I was an ensign in the United States Navy down at Naval Air Station Key West. Invested 25, 50 bucks in the USAA Aggressive Growth Mutual Fund and started applying everything I was learning flying a fighter aircraft, having a strategy, uh, implementing tactics that support the strategy, managing risk, contingency planning, uh, knowing when to get out of a bad or good situation before it got worse. Uh, applied it to my trading with incredible uh, results, man. It just, it, it propelled me literally to Wall Street uh, right there. This is the intersection of Jackson and LaSalle. Very famous intersection. Why? Because that's the Chicago Board of Trade, man. One of the biggest hearts of capitalism uh, in our country. Still the home of open outcry, right? The Dow, you watch CNBC and, you know, the dudes on the floor and the ladies are just, they're there for show, right? Everything's off floor, except where? In Chicago. They still have some open outcry pits, especially down at the commodities wing, man. Frozen orange juice or pork bellies or wheat or anything like that. Anyway, I popped up on the radar of one of the largest volatility arbitrage firms uh, in the world. Actually, it is the largest volatility arbitrage firm in the world. Uh, one of the partners, uh, husband and wife team, is one of the only female billionaires on the face of the planet. And I'm pretty damn sure I helped her become a billionaire. Built a hedge fund when I was there. I built a retail brokerage called Options House when I was there. Did a lot of cool stuff, man. Uh, Managing Director of Strategy, and, and I was the founder and CEO of the Options News Network, ONN uh, TV. We were the CNBC for options. Uh, one of the biggest crowning achievements of my career was trying to buy ad space on CNBC and them denying us ad space because we are a competitor. I'm like, shit hot. Eventually, they took our money. Uh, but uh, I felt like Eddie Murphy in Trading Places little old retail trader going up to, th to the smart money. And I found out just like in trading places, the smart money ain't that smart. Uh, they put their pants on the same way I did. And as a matter of fact, now this isn't conceded. I was one of the smartest people in the room most of the time uh, because they're just not, first of all, they're, it's the greed. You can cut the air with, uh, with a knife, the greed knife. They push their own mother in front of a bus to make a dollar. I, kind of almost even seen that physically couldn't stand uh wall street it's disgusting especially going from a fighter squadron where you trust somebody with your life to wall street where they wear golf cleats to climb up the ladder to step on people it was just awful uh left there came down here to god's waiting room boca raton florida uh where i started talking options 12 years ago i forget man it's been over a decade wrote a couple books covid crash from panic to profit we made millionaires we called the covid crash to the day when donald trump lied from davos on cnbc uh and we made millionaires uh as the market imploded and the smart money said what buy the dip this is the bottom oh this is definitely the bottom i'd buy here i'd nibble here all the way down including the president stocks look good here Dow went down 3,000 points the next day. Good job, Donald. First book I wrote was from sea level to sea level about transitioning from the military to Wall Street. Also run the Max Afterburner podcast. Uh, the new one just dropped. Let me share that with you. Actually, I have our director of medicine ops on there, uh, Miss Nicole Fox. So uh, make sure you check that out. But uh, it's one of the, uh, you ready for this? It's in the top 3% of podcasts on the planet. Oh, what the hell does that mean? I did the same thing when I found out that metric. I'm like, Google, how many podcasts are there in the world? 2.7 million. So being in the top 3% of all podcasts in the world, I think is pretty cool. So make sure you check that out. Uh, do some charity work, Broward Sheriff's Office, uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, uh, and then the Top Gun Fighter Foundation, which is actually going away uh, as I speak, and we're starting the No Fall on Heroes Foundation. Top Gun Fighter Foundation was kind of aviator focused and air crew centric. We're getting rid of that because we're going to focus on healing all veterans uh, who suffer from PTSD, anxiety, depression. We've lost more veterans uh, due to suicide than we did uh, on the battlefield. It's a disgrace. $1.5 billion to Ukraine, 60,000 homeless veterans on the street, 22 veterans a day kill themselves. But sure, 
let's just throw money in all sorts of other places uh, where it's needed. Uh, old picture of me and the family when we left Chicago. It's one of my favorite pictures. Uh, my son Matthew is 21. He graduates next this time next month from Norwich University in Vermont. Dropped him on his head when he was a kid. He wants to fly for the Marine Corps. Jack's a junior in high school, wants to fly for the Navy. Keeley's 14, going on 29, and she's not allowed to leave the house. Okay, let's go ahead and get airborne. Uh, that covers all of that stuff. Um, let's talk about uh, a couple things, man. Um, you've been lied to, right? I mean, it's just, it's Wall Street lies to you every day. Matter of fact, Wall Street lies to each other. I was in a firm, well, if you've ever seen the old billions on Showtime before it went insanely unrealistic and over the top woke, it was actually pretty damn good because that's the way Wall Street operates. Uh, and big Wall Street firms and billionaires and hedge fund managers, it is a form of combat, man. They, they, it is a no holds barred, take no uh, prisoners. So uh, very, very brutal uh, type of place. Uh, it was more enjoyable flying over Iraq than being on Wall Street. Just a, awful people, most awful people. There are some good people, obviously, uh, but most of the good people that I saw got chewed up and spit out. That's why I'm like, let me go do this on my own because this is just not professionally rewarding. The money, obscene. My dad, Matthew, they don't put it in your casket, son. You can't take it with you. So don't need money. Need money to kind of basically survive. Other than that, you throw it over the fence and save people's lives. Shocking news or not, Wall Street's lying to you. How many of you have always heard the Wall Streetism? You can't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to diversify, right? You can't put your eggs in one basket. Diversification is important. I'll give you five tips to diversify. Let me show you the 80 different names you need to be in to diversify your portfolio. It's an absolute lie. You've been lied to since day one of investing. Who lied to you? That dude. I've seen it. I built a brokerage firm. Why would they lie to you? Why would they lie to me, Wiz? You ever see the movie Boiler Room, Wolf of Wall Street? The movie Wall Street? All right, boys, pick up the phones. Let's start dialing. Get the little old lady in tennis shoes that we got into this stock yesterday. Get her out of that one. And it's called churn. They make money on commissions. They want you in as many names as humanly possible, ladies and gentlemen, don't they? It's called churn. I, I thought you wanted me in this name. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's yesterday. Come on, don't you want to be? It's disgusting. I've seen it. They're lying to you. They want you to trade as much as possible because of commissions. I did due diligence on Thinkorswim, on Invest Tools, on Options Express with Optionetics. Why? Because the brokerage firms loved to buy training firms. Why? Because they have to trade somewhere. I've seen it, guys. Well, Wiz, I, you're wrong because I trade at a brokerage firm that doesn't charge me commissions. You are not the customer. Robin Hood, you can trade for free. <laughs> Ken Griffin at Citadel, who was our competitor at Peak Six, and Stevie Cohen at SAC Capital, who's modeled after Axe on Axe, capital billions who wrote the largest check in the history of the world to stay out of jail for insider trading they are the customer if you sit down to play poker and you can't figure out who the idiot is it's you so don't give me this bullshit that well i don't pay commissions so anyway so you've been lied to you do not need to be in a bunch of names as a matter of fact diversification is for stupid people that's me talking let's have a nice older man i'm older Older than me, man, be nicer about it. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for, no, for those who know what they're doing. Read that again slowly, but I'll give you the cliff notes. Diversification is for stupid people. It makes very, it makes very little, he's nice. It makes no sense if you know what you're doing. You want to be diversified? Here's how you diversify. Amazon. Well, that's just one name, Wiz. It is, without a doubt, the most massive company on the effing face of the planet. Every day that goes by, this Death Star gets bigger and goes into a different vertical. Amazon is the only stock you need to own for the rest of your life, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I have to update this. I haven't updated this after a couple of earnings, but you get the picture. 
I'm a political science major, naval aviator. This, anybody's, it's the one of the only companies on, it, only? One of the only companies that continues to grow at 30% a year. When I started investing in 1991, if you had told me uh, that there would be a company that would do this type of math, I would have thought you were from the future or a different time. It's physically impossible. No, it isn't. It's Amazon. Uh, how about their, I remember folks, when I, I've been trading Amazon for decades, uh, AWS wasn't even, it didn't even exist. Andy Jassy, right, the current CEO, and Jeff Bezos made this up in his condo. Amazon Web Services, now these, this chart looks like this, obviously. Amazon Web Services is its own behemoth, right? How about this? What is missing from this chart? Well, just about everything else. Anybody see what happened last night before somebody getting smacked in the face? Entertainment. Amazon prime or whatever it's called the entertainment division amazon air folks their their segments are insanity they're diversified folks matter of fact if you tried to we'll get this in a second but if you tried to break amazon up i'd love it because you'd create <clears throat> at this point it's like mercury if you smash it it goes all over the place you'd create 12 little not little you'd create 12 monopolies instead of one massive one right how about Amazon Prime, the, the the Prime Day? People like put it on their calendars, man. It's almost like a national holiday at this point. It's become an adjective or a verb or whatever. When somebody, when I go to the post office to like send somebody something overnight, what do I say I'm doing? I FedEx it. I just send it overnight air on the postal service. That's a lot of words. It's become part of the American thing. Now, I want you to pretend that I didn't have this up here, the word Amazon. If you, in 1991, showed Ensign Edward Matthew Buckley this slide and asked me to invest in it, I'd say I'd short it and then I'd be broke. Why? Let's take a look at this. Look at the sales. I'd be, I'd be frothing at the mouth. Oh my God, look at the sales of this company. Insane. Well, Ed, okay, free, that's, that's a pretty big delta between sales and free cash flow. Okay, I, I still like the sales profit. Oh, for the love of God and all things holy, I would short this company. They hardly make any profit. Ladies and gentlemen, on your screen right now is why limousine liberals, Democrats, hate Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Why? Because of that. Jeff Bezos, to his credit, has said what? <clears throat> if Amazon makes a dollar, I failed. What? Meaning... I take that dollar and I go do something with it. I buy a competitor. I innovate. I buy another jet. He wants to take everything that he, quote, makes as profit and reinvest it in the Death Star. Brilliant. He has said, I will never split the stock. It's going to split. That's because he's not the CEO anymore. So he lied to us. <gasps> but he also said what? I will, he, I'll never split the stock. Lie. I'll never have a dividend. Why? He's like, what a stupid idea. Dividends are dumb. Why am I, quote, giving money back to shareholders when I have a fiduciary responsibility to do something good with it? I love that mentality. Democrats hate this. Well, let's just have an Amazon tax. Well, that makes sense. Just go. The tax code is not supposed to be like for a company or a specific person, but let's weaponize it like the Gestapo. Don't take my word for it. JG, with a small account trading Wiz's Amazon trades, 8,900 bucks in a week. And JG, small account. Love that. Kristen, you guys are amazing. I trade a smaller account, again with a smaller account, and have done 22 Amazon trades this year for what? $31,000 profit. Christine, not Kristen, different. Month to date profits on Amazon, $107 thousand dollars with more to go thanks Wiz, for all your expertise and guidance doing day trades with short calls to protect my amazon long profits learning from the best and making uh, all of us look stupid and christine in three days i made 90 grand on short calls against my 30 contracts utilizing Wiz's guidance wow okay now Holy crap, Wiz, how do I sign up? No, 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 no. We ain't getting to that until I do what? Just like on the brief I'm doing later. It ain't all sunshine and lollipops and unicorns. Let's talk about the potential risks. 
of trading just a single name, one stock. Anybody ever hear of this mom and pop company called Lehman Brothers? How about this one, Bear Stearns? Jim Cramer, love Jim Cramer, right? Bear Stearns, you're an idiot if you're not in Bear Stearns. $70, it's a steal. Your money's safe at Bear Stearns, zero, two days later. Famous clip of Jim Cramer doing that. Everybody remember that? JP Morgan, 150-year-old company, gone. Anybody ever hear of Pets.com or Enron? I just watched over the weekend the smartest guys in the room. Watch it. I watched that 10 years ago. I just watched it again this weekend. Enron. They didn't even like own the building they were in. They were a middleman of electricity, screwing California, rolling blackouts. Pets.com didn't even know. They owned a stinky sock puppet and a domain name. What's the common thread between these examples? We could spend the rest of the next 34 minutes going through the graveyard of stocks that have gone to zero. I've had a couple in my portfolio. I loved Lucent at 100, and I loved it at 10, apparently. They didn't own a thing. Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers owned what? Paper. They owned this. The common theme between stocks that go to zero, folks, is they own nothing. What does Amazon own? Everything. I used to do, uh, I did some consulting on the side down at a fulfillment center south of uh, the airport in Miami. This place was larger than an aircraft carrier and just as busy inside. You ever seen these Amazon places? They own stuff. They own airplane. They, they own stuff. It's physically impossible for Amazon to go to zero. If it does, you're not going to know about it because we're all dead in nuke strike from Vlad because of regime change. And Sleepy Joe just doesn't know how to talk anymore. So it owns stuff, folks. So, um, And I get it. I mean, it's, it's just insane what's going on with Amazon. Seven years ago, I used to fly for FedEx. Hated it. Eight months, misery. Went to American, 9-11, first and last day at work. It's in my book. I got a call from a buddy in corporate. Dude, who's Jeff Bezos owns Amazon, right? I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, I just heard from a buddy at GE Aircraft Leasing. He's leasing five jets. He's like, he's going to do it. He's going to do what? I'm like, put you out of business. <laughs> he will. Amazon is now <laughs> shipping cargo for FedEx. And you, it's just Amazon is poised to pass UPS and FedEx to become the largest. I called this, folks. Anyway, whoa, what's this guy doing here? Please don't come back. Politics. First year of Trump's presidency, Trump grabbed his cell phone and blasted Jeff Bezos. Amazon. It's a monopoly. Somebody needs to do something. Blah, 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 blah. What happened? Stock went down a little bit like, oh, shit. And then what happened? It never looked back. He did it again, like his last year of the presidency. They're destroying the post office. It's a monopoly. Somebody has to do something. Somebody has to do something, said the most powerful man on the planet. What a moron. Like when he'd rip the Fed chief apart. Dude's awful. I'd fire him. You, you, you hired him. Cowards rip people apart. And you, you, you praise in public and you counsel in private, but that's all right. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, there are risks, but he proved that nothing's going to happen. Department of Justice, this. Attorney General, that. Washington, D.C., this. Folks, it's, who cares? Whenever you see the words, I used to be worried when I'd see this type of headline, like DOJ, right? DOJ is a badge. DOJ is criminal. DOJ is DOJ. FDC, I'd laugh at. Standard Oil, Microsoft, AT&T. It took anywhere from five to ten to 15 years for Uncle Sammy to even like get around to making a conclusion like, uh, we think this should be broken up. Last time I checked, Jeff Bezos, well, maybe this morning with Tesla going through the roof and Elon Musk getting richer, Jeff Bezos is one, if not the richest man on the face of the planet. Kind of think he maybe knows five or six attorneys or five or 600 that would tie anything up and go to the Supreme Court for the rest of our lives. So folks, I would not be doing my job if I didn't brief you on the potential threats to just trading one name, but they're kind of all negated. There ain't no really big threats, right? 
Amazon fined $1.3 billion in an Italian antitrust case. That's his fuel for his yacht for a year. Okay, now let's be honest. I told all my members here at Topkin Options, I wear two suits. I wear a flight suit literally today. I'll tell you how I feel as American. I think Jeff Bezos is a disgrace. He's a limousine liberal. Somebody should help those poor people. Doesn't pay his employees well enough. At the height of COVID, he didn't even have PPE for his employees in a warehouse. And, rah, I can froth at the mouth about Amazon. And then I'm going to shut up because I'm going to put on my $10,000 Armani and talk like Gordon Gecko. You want a friend, get a dog. I think Jeff Bezos is fantastic. I think he should fire all his employees that are trying to unionize. I think he should cut salaries. Right? Sometimes in trading, we have what we call a hold your nose trade. Amazon for me is a little bit of a hold your nose trade. I mean, seriously, I'll we can sit down and shoot the shit about how I feel about it as an American. I don't really care. I'm here to uh, teach you all how to potentially make money. Now, I just scared you with all the potential risks or not. What are the benefits? Well, folks, when you tr we could potentially profit no matter what direction Amazon moves. If you're new to trading options, I know a lot of one of my stock buddies just emailed his list. I will teach you how to trade options. If you want to learn the binomial pricing model and have an eight-hour lecture on volatility, you can go somewhere else. I'm going to teach you what you need to know to fly the airplane. You want to go learn how the flight control system works, knock yourself out. I'm going to show you how to potentially profit no matter what direction Amazon moves. You're going to stay focused on the news that impacts what? Amazon instead of a ton of different stocks and ETFs. You're going to become an expert in Amazon, reducing the time spent on other positions. Now, I throw my buddy under the bus all the time, and he, he actually likes it now because he, he cleaned up his life, so to speak. One of my buddies down here in Boca Raton, a doctor, when I helped him, showed me his portfolio the first day I met him. He had 33 positions. I'm not shitting you. This isn't a joke. I counted them after I got up off the floor. I'm like, for the love of God and all things holy, how many positions do you have? This is a doctor. Eight 12 hour days, office hour surgeries. He's an orthopedic. 33 positions. He tried to brief me. Well, this one's like a, a surgical something. I don't know what it is. My buddy got it in me into it. It's down 50% right now. I'm going to, you ready for this? I'm going to wait for it to come back and then I'll get out of it. I'm like, you went to med school for eight? To, yeah, yeah. Do you know the percentage that that stock has to go up to get you back to it? Okay. I think this one's a pot stock. You, you, you think? Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you are flying in an F4, looking around your trading platform right now going, holy shit. Folks, when I was at Peak 6, we had a research desk, like 22 on the left side of the, the trading firm, 22 analysts. Their job was to eat, breathe, sleep, one or two names. Maybe at most, I think the research had like five. They got shit wrong. I forget whichever earnings I went over to the dude. I'm like, how could you not even be what? You, retail trader, sitting at home in your bunny slippers. I'm going to tell you, I've been doing this for over three decades. Three to five names is a lot. If you're trading anything more than five names, guys, and you're not sitting here for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I don't know how you do it. You're better than me, and I'll admit it. Not me, man. I want to be a master of these names. This is why I'm boiling this down to what? One name, or actually two. I'm, it's going to be two names because I'm going to show you. Because Amazon ain't that cheap, right, guys? We'll look at the, my brokerage platform in a second here. But simplify your – even if you don't join solo Amazon today – simplify your trading cockpit. I know some of you get up, turn on CNBC, Fox Business, or Bloomberg and go, oh, that, that guy, good looking suit, good looking hair, white teeth. What stocks he talking about? I'm going to look at that one. What? A cheerleading channel that people come on to promote their names. That they're, It's just, it's insane. Stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, a good substitute to trade since Amazon is so expensive is what? XLY. If you're sitting here going, Wiz, I love it, but does not compute, can't not diversify, must be diversified. Even though Amazon is diversified, here's your 
must diversify. Take a look at the XLY. It's the consumer uh, discretionary ETF, right? The number one holding of the XLY is Amazon. What's number two? Tesla, Home Depot, McDonald's, can't stand Nike, can't stand Starbucks, Lowe's, Target, Booking, TJX. Your diversification, it's on your screen. One of my good friends used to say that shrimp are nothing more than a vehicle for eating cocktail sauce. XLY is a vehicle for trading Amazon and Tesla and some other good names. The XLY is a great ETF to trade. How great? We targeted it last week, and I'll show you that trade we did last Monday's live trade brief. How do we target Amazon and XLY for max profit? We're going to establish what we call a base position. If you joined, or if you when you joined today, you're going to get access to what we did last week, the trade where we established a base position in XLY. I'll show it to you. We flew two years out into the future and got bullish on XLY. I call it a base position. For the Marines in the room, it's called a beachhead. We did synthetic stock. You could do a long call diagonal, but we did synthetic stock. With what? Protective puts. I never went flying in the Hornet without an injection seat, period. Even though I'm that, that good, I'm not that good. After we establish our base position out into the future, we're going to trade what we call the front months. We'll go take a look at XLY and we'll trade the front months. If Amazon or XLY are going up, we do bullish spreads or we buy some calls. Amazon or XLY are going down. <gasps> We do bearish spreads and buy some puts. What if Amazon is moving sideways? Can we do something? Yeah, we make money in what's called an iron condor. Stocks, you can make money three ways. Buy, hope, and pray. You buy the stock, you hope it goes up. If it doesn't, you pray. Options, we can make money up, down, or sideways. I will teach you how to do this. Let's go take a look at what's going on in the market right now. Let me put my cheaters on so I can see. Amazon, XLY, how's Amazon doing? Yeah. Let's go take a look at Amazon. Let me go show you the trade, though, uh, that we did last week. Let's go look at – this was last Monday. So when you join today, you're going to get access to last week, all the briefs. But we did what is called synthetic stock. Okay, This might look busy. It's not. I'm going to teach you – well, you, you go – the replay is down at the bottom of this page. You see it right here? It says replay. You can watch last week's brief because what did we do? We got long-term bullish out to January of 2024 doing a tactic that is called synthetic stock. We bought a protective put, and we sold an upside call. This is called synthetic stock. This is as if you owned the XLY. You don't own the XLY, we're trading options on the XLY. That looked like Nancy Pelosi behind Joe Biden. This is called synthetic stock. Take a look at what the XLY has done since last Monday. It's up six bucks, five dollars and seventy cents since last week. Your synthetic stock is doing great since last week. Long term bullish on the XLY. This thing, this there we are. Last week, boom. This thing, uh, we're it will be back up at 200. Well, we got to talk strategically, strategically what's going on in the world. But I just wanted to share with you when you become a member today, I you will learn how to get long-term bullish on the XLY out two years from now. Okay. All right, real quick, uh, I got to give you a quick uh, strategic uh, brief here. Um, it's really interesting how the White House, Antony Blinken, Pisaki, all these people try and clean up just absolute, uh, you know, how Biden sparked a global uproar with nine ad lib words about Putin. He can't stay. My God, he said, Jesus, this man can't stay in power. That was just the best soundbite for Vladimir Putin for his country. You see. They just want to get rid of me. I had to do this. Within minutes, the White House was in damage control. That's not what he said. That's actually what he said. That's not what he meant. Oh, I saw on Twitter some blue check limousine liberal saying he it's foreign policy from the heart. Foreign policy from the heart is going to get everybody killed. He literally walked right into Putin's trap. Regime change. We, what's our record, folks? Anybody know what our record is with regime change? I think 0 and 5. 
So why am I talking about this? Because you have to keep your radar downrange. We can talk about Amazon and XLY all we want. If Putin keeps going in Ukraine, doesn't stop and goes to Poland, now we're in World War III, guys. This is not something I take lightly. We have long VIX calls on. I've talked about buying puts on the S&P 500 just in case things don't go swimmingly well. But with these gas, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, it's embarrassing. And second of all, it's dangerous. After the speech, everybody who ignored his massive mistake were like, it was like Ronald Reagan's tear down this wall speech. I don't remember the White House coming out within minutes and having to walk back anything the president said in that speech. It's an absolute, uh, absolute embarrassment. Anyway, uh, Russia and Ukraine are talking in Turkey. I'm starting to hear rumors that <clears throat> they Putin might settle for a, you ready for this, North, South Korea. East, West, Ukraine. We're keeping the East. You can have the West. So I got to be honest with you, man. I think the market has a little bit of Ukraine fatigue. As we're speaking, children, women, men are being turned into hair, teeth, and eyeballs. It's horrific. I think that's kind of in here right now, unfortunately, that the market has Ukraine fatigue. Barring just absolutely something horrific. Well, Wiz, my definition of horrific is men, women, and children being kid, killed. It is mine, too. The market doesn't care anymore. The market only cares when it cares. It cared. Now it doesn't. The market is also ignoring the fact that Jerome Powell last week said what? Yeah. Uh, remember two, three months ago? Yeah, we're going to have to ditch that transitory term. Janet Yellen. Joe Biden and Jerome Powell for a year told us inflation was transitory and deal with it. It's going away. And then one day they're like, holy shit, it isn't. Isn't it insane when we the people kind of know everything that's going on and our leaders just lie to us or they appear delusional or completely out of touch? So the market is also ignoring the fact that inflation is raging and the Fed chief last week said, yeah, I'm going to have to throttle, throttle up the rate cuts even more. I guess, and I listened to my brief on the way in to the hangar this morning, the conventional wisdom is, even though we're on fire, we're going straight downhill, and the airline captain's never had to deal with this emergency before, he's going to land this plane safely. So I'm going to give you a quick wisdom. Trade the market you have, not the one you want. Not that I want a down market. I want a down market as an options trader because volatility goes through the roof. It's like hurricane. I'm a hurricane insurance company when there's a hurricane coming. I love volatility. I don't love down markets as an American. People's 401ks get destroyed. People get hurt. I don't like seeing that. However, comma, markets go down a hell of a lot faster than they go up, except this time, right? Usually, markets do what? This type of go up. This is insane. This was a short squeeze. And then when we got up to here and hit that 50 day move, 200 day moving average and consolidated, people said, all right, who cares about Ukraine right now until it gets worse? Uh, and Jerome Powell, we got, even though he says this is what he's doing, either we don't believe it or we think everything's fine. That's where we are, guys. You have to trade the market you have, not the one you want. Transport stocks are flashing bullish signals for the broader market. If you subscribe to Dow Theory, transports and financials tend to lead us in and out of bad or good. The transports are flashing bullish. I'm still waiting to feel the impact on the supply chain of all these Russian sanctions. But again, I'm looking forward in space and time, right? I'm not looking at today. This is where you make your money, folks. The right side of the chart. No broker I know lets you trade off the left side. So we have to project our thoughts forward in space and time. And what do I do? I look at the bad and the good. The bad, war gets worse. Putin uses chemical or nuclear. Remember, folks, I think they're up at seven generals killed, like one admiral and six generals. These dudes are getting clipped. If you're the – and dudes are getting fired. If you're the replacement for a guy who just got killed or just got sent to Siberia, what do you do? Do you do worse or do you get more violent? 
or use more weapons. There was a great article one of my buddies shared with me last night about how Russia really has been kind of pulling their punches. They really haven't fully unleashed their thing yet. It was a great read why, and I forgot to post it. But anyway, here's what I'm getting at. Right now, trading the market we have, not the one that I want, is cautiously, insanely cautiously bullish. There, ladies and gentlemen, part of this is also FOMO. We are looking at end of the month rebalance, you know, window dressing, rebalancing, all sorts of stuff. This is also a retail rally. Most people in retail have been taught what? Who haven't traded since the COVID crash. You buy the dip. Me, I'm in about 90% cash right now. 10% some psychedelics, 10% a little uh, Amazon. I am mainly cash. I have no problems missing out on a little bit of upside to get confirmation. This really isn't confirmation for me. This was a short squeeze. Here, let, let's pretend let's pretend this doesn't exist or this for a little bit. This with the 200 day rate here is what I'm looking at and the 100 day. Right now the S&P 500 is bumping up against the 100 day. I'm just sitting here cautious incredibly cautiously bullish ICB ICBM um uh, but 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 uh, bear traps I'll talk about that tomorrow in the primary brief Amazon what was this one uh no nope. and then I read that earlier oh yeah Amazon's MGM purchase made it one of the biggest Oscar content I mean five ten years ago Amazon Entertainment the dude is a bookseller. It's in everything, guys. Amazon Entertainment is its own Death Star. It's insane. A year or two ago, I remember a little snippet in the news. Amazon just trademarked and patented Amazon Pharma. You want a short play? It's Walgreens and CVS. In five, three to five years from now, there will not be corner drugstores. You will get a text. You'll go to the door, you'll open the door, a drone will scan your face, and it'll drop your prescriptions in your hand. It's over with, folks. Amazon is taking over everything. Um, oh, I, yeah, he could use tactical nukes. He could he could do all sorts of stuff. All right, let's go. I want to stay on time. Quick look at Amazon right there, man. Rip through the 50-day moving average with airspeed. Had a little chop for a second or two above the 100, and then now rip it to the 200. Remember, these moving averages, folks, are magnets. These are magnets. It either gets pulled up or back down to, to consolidate. So we got some magnet things going on. I think we're going to take a little bit of a break uh, up here, though, to consolidate uh, before uh, you know we kind of look around and it heads higher. I think we're about a month out from, um, uh, from earnings. Uh, so. Uh, Dan, let me answer that at the end. Let me let me get my trades on, and then I'll I, let me answer those type of questions at the end. It's a very good question. All right, XLY. So we have synthetic stock on the XLY in the middle portfolio. Um, so yeah, exactly. When the split comes, it's that's going to be interesting. Amazon's going to be priced exactly like the XLY. It's going to be uh, around two hundred bucks, right? So. Uh, Theo, absolutely. So uh, a couple questions about the stock split. Stupid people love stock splits because they don't get math. If you have $10,000 to invest in Amazon, well, I could only buy one contract. But it, at at $10,000, I could buy 200 contracts or whatever it is, uh, or 200 shares. You're deploying the same amount of money. But I have more shares. No matter... How many decades I've been doing this, it always makes me laugh about stock splits. Markets love stock splits because the market also has a lot of stupid people in it. So Amazon splitting and going down to whatever it's going to be is bullish because more people believe wrongly because they don't understand math that they can get into Amazon now. It's incredibly bullish. Everybody understand that. For the basic math people, if you have 10 grand to invest in Amazon, you have 10 grand to invest in Amazon today and when it splits. 
just because you have more shares doesn't mean you made more money. But again, we're all smart people. Not everybody is smart. Does that make sense? So you can get bullish on Amazon right now uh, and everything's going to uh, adjust. Okay. Maybe Amazon trying to hope for the same chart pattern says Tesla. Exactly. The five for, uh, I get it, man. I get it. it it's more of a, uh, it's more of a, it's, it's a retail thing. All right, real quick. Let's, I, I do think, uh, I'd like a weekly trade. Uh, but like I said, when you sign up today, you can get into, uh, you're going to get access to look at last week's synthetic stock trade. Get into this. This is long-term bullish on XLY with Amazon and Tesla making up the majority of XLY. You want to be long-term bullish on XLY period. No brainer. That trade's free. As soon as you log in, and, uh, and get your login after you join, you can go do this. I am think. did I send this out? I never got filled on this. What is, that's, let's take a look at this pricing. The 3420, 3430, this pricing looks off. Let me cancel this. I'm like, uh, so I'm gonna trade a very wide iron condor on Amazon uh super wide how do i know what strikes to trade i'll teach you how to do that you go to the options chain i'm going to teach you options basics guys but i'm, I'm, I'm having a cruise here for time 3350 let's take a look at the at the money straddle for amazon out the friday what tells the at the money straddle i'll teach you in, it's about a hundred bucks man by friday the options market is expecting amazon to move within a hundred bucks. Let's go take a look at the Elizabeth Warren TP here. You see this, see that green? The options market is saying, we think Amazon is gonna stay between 34.40 and 32.50. I'm gonna put on a nice wide iron condor. I call it a football trade. This iron condor, Amazon can stay between here. You can run all over the field. How about Villanova? Go Wildcats. You can stay on the court, man, as long as you don't step out of bounds. With the stock being up a percent and a half today, the first trade that I'm going to do is I'm going to leg into this iron condor. So I'm going to do the bear call spread. I mean, we are, this is just a rip your face off rally. So I'm going to be more conservative. What was it? I mean, this trade I looked at initially was looking pretty good. Uh, 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 uh. I could probably go. No, I like this one. 250. I'm going to sell 15 of Friday's 3420 calls. What's the stock currently at? 3345. That's a big move. This thing's got to just keep on. It can. It can keep going up this week. I think we're going to take a little bit of a breather, go back down to that 100, at least hang out for a little bit. I'm going to sell 15 of Friday's 3420 calls. And as a hedge, I'm going to buy the 3440s, 3430s. What's that mean? In case Amazon has a rip your face off rally, I'm long above 3430. This is called a spread. This is called a credit spread. This is called a bear call spread. Okay. So. Selling 15, of, and remember folks, this is me for this model portfolio. Let's take a look at the risk. This is risk in about 11 to make 38. Now, that is based on 15 contracts. You could do five. Let's see what five contracts does. You risk 3,800 bucks to make 1,300 bucks by Friday. Okay, remember, this is five contracts. I was doing 15. This model portfolio is based on about, I think, it, what are we up right now? hundred and, I don't want to risk more than 10% of this model portfolio on any one trade. So I'm okay with my 15 contracts. But again, I can't give you individual investment advice. You could do 10 contracts. What's 10 contracts get you? 10 contracts gets you 7,500 in risk with a $2,500 potential profit. 71% probability using at the money volatility in these options that you make that max profit. We make money three out of four ways with a bear call spread. You see that dash line? That's currently the price of Amazon. So how do we make money? Amazon goes down, that's way number one. Amazon stays where it is. You know what, Wiz, you're right. It kind of, it's hovering, it's just hanging out. We make money. We get what is called theta. Theta equals time decay. So if Amazon's just kind of unchanged, 
hunched on the day equals time decay. We get theta. Amazon can even go up a little bit, folks, as long as it stays below that break even right there, which is 34.2250. That's a big rip your face off rally that's needed in this name. Now, let's get this one on. 50 is good. Oop. I'm going to fire that one. And I'm going to talk about what do I mean by legging into an iron condor. Let me grab 10, send out a text alert on that. Copy. What do I mean legging into an iron condor? As Amazon's going up here, I'm putting a roof on it. But I think it's going to probably come back down here a little bit and consolidate around the 100. Legging into the iron condor means I do the bear call spread first up here. And then if Amazon starts to roll over and give some back here, I'm going to put on what's called a bull put spread. So technically, I'm going to have two trades on Amazon this week. Bear call spread I'm doing right now. The bull put spread I'm going to do when or if Amazon starts uh, to roll over. Okay. That legs into a tactic called an iron condor. It's a range bound trade. Okay. We're going to do a wide iron condor, man. We're going to give Amazon a lot of room to breathe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, what time? 3.50? Yeah, I'll do that right now, and then I will come back to uh, answer questions uh, if you, you have about XOY, uh, because I want to keep people on time here. Time. Brief start on time. They end on time. Solo Amazon is the name of this service. I just invited all the new folks to a current Solo Amazon brief. Every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, we do a solo uh, Amazon uh, brief. It's our newest live trading service. Um, actually, no, that's wrong. Tomcat Chart. I got to change the slide. We have a new trading service it's called Tomcat Charts uh, with one of our new instructors, F14 guy uh, named Bart. Uh, so I got to ditch that. Um, solo Amazon is only $8.97 for a year, folks. That's a 50% discount or $97. Uh, a month. I'll give you the link for both of these. Uh, well, let me do that right now. 97 bucks a month. Or if you want to get a really good, no, it's a 25% discount. I forget. I'm a political science major, folks. I don't do math. So here you go. Again, if you didn't grab your full throttle slot a couple weeks ago, this is shrimp. This is uh, your vehicle for eating cocktail sauce. This is the vehicle for coming to check out what we do here at Topkin Options. $97 a month, or it's a 25% discount to do the annual. It's $8.97 uh, uh, a year. And based on this trade, I could pretend one trade could potentially pay for a couple years uh, in this uh, service here. Uh, yep, I'll answer all your questions here in a couple minutes, guys. Let me finish this because there are people asking to get on board because they might be limited by time. That's the link. It's topkinoptions.com slash solo Amazon or the monthly one. I just gave it to you. Um, hey, Wiz, can of 10. Monday mornings at 10 a.m. I work for a living. Well, guess what? About 80% of our members work as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you right now as I leave the room, I'm going to send out a text and email alert. Uh, so you're going to get text and email alerts on XLY and Amazon trades. This is a sample of what the uh, the text alert looks like. And then the email, just I'll show you what the email looks like. You get a screenshot of the trade. You get a screenshot of the metrics. Those things fire at exactly the same time. Sometimes they get the email first. It's weird how that works. And then I post the replay on the member page about 30 minutes after the brief because it takes about 20 minutes for the replay uh, to render. So give me about 30 minutes uh, and then you can watch the replay. There are folks who uh, have never attended a live trade brief here at uh, Topkin Options, man. Chris, I'm so geeked. Don't know what that means, but been a subscriber for almost three years now and this is the first time I've been able to attend live. I only know you via the replays. Pretty cool. Uh, Proprietary manuals, your primary, intermediate, advanced uh, workbooks. Let me do some political science and, and Navy math real quick. If it's 97 bucks a month and you just went and bought all these manuals on my homepage for 197 bucks, uh, let, let's really, let's, oh, so Wiz just gave me 100 bucks. Yes, that's what my marketing people call an irresistible offer. I call it stupid, but they call it irresistible offer. So this is why we do this. Throw in the manuals, Wiz. You essentially get to trade free for your first month. <laughs> you get paid 100 bucks to do 30 days of, uh, of solo Amazon, man. So all your manuals are involved. Read them. Download them. Read them. Okay. Now, here's what you get. 
for 97 bucks a month or 897 uh, a year. You get access to um, the solo Amazon brief. That is wrong. It's every Monday at 10. Didn't hit save on my uh, when I was doing this last night. Okay, uh, you get the text alerts, the manuals, and then the uh, access to what we call the Red Room. That's our online forum where you can ask questions of me, your fellow squatter mates, all that good stuff. Bob, closed an Amazon synthetic stock and all Amazon positions associated with synthetic stock for a $37,000 profit. Goose, $23,800 profit in a month. Wow. Chuck. Thank you, Wiz, for the 3,500 Amazon calls yesterday. I closed three contracts at my 30% profit target, cleared 15 grand in a day. Also had six Amazon, 3,900, 2023 calls that also hit 30% for another 50K. Those are current TGO members, folks, in Solo Amazon. You want to test slide for a month? Topkinoptions.com slash solo dash Amazon. Dash monthly. The links are in the chat box. Now, <clears throat> I feel like the guy with the flex seal tape, but wait, there's more. Make sure you get access to the full throttle training. It's only 195 bucks, folks. Went out in Delray Beach yesterday. 195 bucks was would be cheap based on uh, what we ate. So, eight live training sessions once a quarter. These things are insanely timely, right? I don't do a VCR recording of me talking about iron condors in front of a whiteboard and sell that thing for the next 20 years. I do live training every quarter. There are people that charge th thousands of dollars for this stuff. I don't. The training is less expensive. The practical application of the training, the live trade briefs, are what cost money. That makes sense. I flipped this model on its head at the Options News Network. I'd, I'd walk around the uh, Traders Expos in Vegas. And the money shows like with protection, man, because people were pissed. They'd be selling these like huge like DVD things like for five grand. Here's your options thing. I'm like, oh, my God, that's awful. Change the industry. Uh, Chuck uh, totaled my Amazon trades for November and I was in shock. Cleared one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars in profits this month on just Amazon. So grateful to this group for what I have learned and accomplished. I had a total of 33 Amazon trades this month that were mainly spreads and calls. I still think Amazon wants 4K, so I look for the opportunity to reload. Guess what? Amazon does want 4K. It's back to wanting 4K, Chuck. So let's get back uh, on board for the big win. Or not 4K, 400 after it splits, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Solo Amazon, folks. Uh, the other briefs are usually 147 to 167 a month. It's 897 a year or $97 a month. That this is the best deal that we have out here, folks. If you didn't learn anything today, I failed. I failed miserably. But hopefully you learned at least to simplify your trading cockpit, man. If you're running around out there with seven, ten, fifteen names, I don't know how you do it. If you do it, you do it profitably. God bless you. You're great. Shoot me an email. Maybe you can be an instructor here. But I simplify my trading cockpit, man. Less and quality is better. Diversification is for people who don't know what they're doing. Yes, I will. I'll go back. Sorry, I went over by four minutes. Didn't mean to do that. Had to talk about Will Smith and the Oscars because everybody else is. What a great move by the Oscars, too. 10 million viewers down from like 100 million back in the day. How do you like get this thing going? You do that. Yeah, uh, here's the link. Monthly, sure. Monthly is only 97 bucks. You get your manuals. It's right here. Solo-Amazon-Monthly. 97 bucks, man. That's your 30-day trial right there. What's a rebill at? 97 bucks. We don't do trials, man. That's you tried for a month. Um, and then here's the annual. You get a nice, uh, yes, I think I did the math wrong. It's 25% discount. Whatever it is, it's a great deal. I prefer you be in the monthly for the rest of your life but that's not me um i, I like helping people out uh ta -ta -ta -ta. bid ass spread on amazon is crazy you got it man why because volatility in the name is through the roof rip your face off rally so that you can drive a truck through the bid ask uh spread 
Charles, please talk about last Monday's VIX trade. Charles, we're in a solo Amazon. If you got a question on the VIX trade, you can post it in the Max Afterburner group. We will talk about the VIX tomorrow uh, in the primary live trade brief. Uh, Goose, I followed Wiz a long time. Uh, joined solo Amazon way back when. Watch recordings, learn. Now I am helping others do the same at TGO. It's a great place to start. You got it, Goose. <clears throat> FT looks reasonable on bear call, credit spread leg on iron condor. Thanks, Wiz. You're welcome. Steve, if Amazon goes down, would you buy back your short calls Friday to fire prior to Friday expiration? Steve. Yes, with an if, maybe with a but. Uh I, I if it's really volatile, if something's really swinging around, I, I can dog fight the short calls in a spread. I got to be honest with you, man. I run a charity. We're making a documentary film. I fly. I, I, I usually put my spreads on and I set it and forget it. Uh, the days when I'm sitting here and I and I kind of the days when I I used to do that, Steve, I, I really kind of don't uh, anymore. But you absolutely can do that. Um, Andrew. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, guys, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to uh, I'm going to send out this if you want to hang out watch me do a uh that's not it a uh text alert and see what the emails look like you can otherwise i am done welcome aboard to all of my phones vibrating which means people are signing up which is a good sign so let me send out this text and email right now and you guys can watch what it's doing copy uh absolutely yep just shoot, shoot support at um, topkinoptions.com. Armand, please post the second half of the Iron Condor trade. <laughs> uh, no, a couple of reasons. First, uh, that's going to be for members. And second, why would I post that right now if I believe that Amazon is going to do this? I wouldn't put that on right now. I'm going to wait for the, I have to wait. I have to wait a little bit to see if Amazon starts giving some of this back. Then I will take a look at the spreads for the Iron Condor. Not doing it right now, man. If Amazon, Arma, and I'm just kind of, I'm giving you a tongue in cheek, a little grief. If if Amazon wasn't doing, if Amazon was doing what it did on Friday, I would put, I, I'd be able to give you both spreads right now. I'd give you the top, the roof, uh, and the basement. Not right now. Now with it moving, I'll give you the roof. The basement, I'll give you later in the week if you join. How about that? Dan, is a new low coming in the next few months? Your thoughts with scale of one to 10? A new low in the next, well, so folks, I'm one of the only financial professionals on the face of the planet that, here's my exact words. Joe Biden's sophomore year will be a train wreck and a shit show. It will be a bear market, check, and it will be a recession. We are in a recession right now. How do you know that the government had the government folks tells you we're in a recession six to mo eight months after we're already in it. They look at all the data and they finally crunch it and they go, oh, yeah, the recession kind of started six months ago. We're in a recession right now and it's only going to get worse. Now, to your question. If. If Vladimir Putin uses a a tactical nuke or a chemical weapon the market will implode back down to 4150 if jerome powell and i don't think he's going to do this shocks the market with like a, a 75 or a full point in, increase out of out of the blue we will go back down now let me let, let me say this the stock market is not the economy. The economy is not the stock market. That was worth the price of admission, but that Wall Streetism, that whizism, has never been more appropriate than today. We can this this economy can be the, the Fed wants to slow the economy, folks. It's why it's rising interest rates. It understands that things are way overheating and on fire. Jerome Powell is trying to really slow this economy. I got to be honest with you, if I was Jerome Powell, I'd be like, hey, man, don't tell anybody this. A little recession might actually be exactly what we need right now. The stock market can keep going up in a shitty economic environment, man. 
it has nothing to do with the economy. Now, usually the delta between the stock market and the economy, those lines usually have to intersect again. So on a scale of one to 10, very long answer to your short question, on a scale of one to 10, in the next however many months you said that we hit a new low, 40%, a 40% delta, not 50-50, I'd say 60% probability that we're going higher, a 40, which is not insignificant, guys, a 40% that we hit new lows. You throw in a China moving after Taiwan, no offense to Ukraine, this market's going to care a hell of a lot more than uh, uh, about Taiwan and the semiconductors that we're going to lose. Absolutely. So. It's it's so uh, Dan that that's my answer. All right, guys. Uh, solo Amazon. Let me do my text and email alert and welcome aboard. Let me uh, get going here. All right, folks. If you're not if you didn't join up, hey man, maybe in a couple of weeks. I think Bart's going to do a uh, a Tomcat charts brief. Uh, other than that, we're going to close the doors uh, this afternoon. I'm going to post a replay. It'll be on our YouTube page on the Top Gun Options YouTube page. And then for everybody who becomes a member, uh, the uh, the trades and everything will be underneath member content over here on Solo Amazon. For all the people that do join that are new, underneath member content, do me a favor and go over here to the Getting Started Brief. Before you do anything here at TGO, just go watch the Getting Started Brief. It'll tell you about the text alerts, the emails, the manuals, uh, and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so that that's a cool place uh, to start. Thomas, I'm in, bro. Welcome aboard, Thomas. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Uh, make sure you hedge, and God bless. I'll talk to you later. Cheers. And if you want to hang out and watch the uh, <clears throat> the email hitting the text alert, hit you can uh, hang out. But uh, regular members, you guys can head out if you want. I'm gonna buy thirty four thirty calls. And this is why you want to join the uh, the lifetime or the <clears throat> excuse me the hunters because they get instantaneous alerts on all this stuff. This takes a little bit of uh, at two fifty credit. All right, so that's the text alert. Copy. I'm going to go back to here, send the email. <clears throat> Excuse me. Looking forward to flying, man. It's not a cloud in the sky, a little chill in the air down here in South Florida. The jet loves a little bit of a little cold in the air. Uh, legging into. Amazon Iron Condor. I just usually paste the uh, the text alert up at the top of the email. Why? I don't know. Redundancy. So paste the text alert, and then I'm going to insert the screenshot of the trades. Uh, the links are in the chat box. Uh, I, I've already. I, I'll, I'll post them again. Uh, just give me a couple seconds here. Let me get the trade out. Amazon right there. Okay, change this image. All right, got the text at the top, screenshots of that. <clears throat> Let's publish this campaign. April 1st, Charles, it's Friday. <clears throat> this is a weekly trade, so it's uh, essentially for Friday. Contacts, find all our solo Amazon members. <clears throat> My watch tell me to get up. That tells me I've been sitting too long. We're solo Amazon right there.
353 members are going to get a text and email alert. Hopefully you'll be one of them. I mean, if you just joined, I don't know if it's that quick. Solo Amazon right there. <clears throat> Save. Process. All right, so this thing starts uh, thinking and firing. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, actually, yes, I do. Uh, it's right here. Uh, if you want to sign copy of my book, sure. You can order COVID crash, or you can order from sea level to sea level, or you can do both. Uh, you can get both. If you order both, we'll give you a 25% discount. That's right here. I'll drop it in the mail today. Uh, signed. If you want it addressed to somebody, yeah, just when you order, I think there's a little form you can put in there to uh, to do that go.topkinoptions.com uh, slash book. That's the, the link for the um, for the book or books. Wow. One of the per so my mastermind group, one of our perma bears threw in the towel today. Wow, that's the sign of a top, right? <laughs> it's when all the bears, when all the bears are uh, are getting bullish. All right, so this just fired. It scheduled 353 texts and emails, and it just processed them. So it should be a second or two for this to hit. Uh, okay. Um, bu, 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 bu. Any other questions, concerns, oh, by the ways, or smart remarks uh, before I head on out? Uh, it's called Tomcat Charts uh, uh, with Bart. We'll uh, uh, you just keep an eye. Uh, if, if you join Solo Amazon, you're gonna you'll get emails about it. But I'll email the whole list when next time Bart does a brief. He's brilliant, man. Talking about the charts and the. I'm just I'm an idiot when it comes to a lot of that stuff, but but Bart is not. This is this is good stuff. He's a very very smart guy. There it is, right there. What did that take? That took him. That was a minute and thirty seconds. So there you go. There's the <clears throat> news. Solo Amazon position legging into Amazon Iron Condor. There's the text alert at the top, and there's a screenshot of the trades. Let's see if I got the text yet. See that funny? I didn't get. The, well, this hanger sucks. It's like I'm in a bunker, but I didn't get my text alert. Oh, look at that. Just got my text alert. So text fired. I got the email first, and I got the uh, the text alert, what, three, four, five seconds later. So that's pretty funny. Let me grab a screenshot of that so I can update. So there it is right there, if you can see that. I'm going to take a screenshot of this so I can update that on my slides. And I have a couple slides I have to update right now. Uh, obviously. Good stuff. All right, man, I'm going to get going. Great stuff. Uh, I'll see most of you if you're in uh, a full throttle. We have the primary live trade brief tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We are going to debrief volatility uh, because it's insane what's going on. Uh, when volatility is cheap, you buy it. When it's expensive, you sell it. So we got long volatility last week and we will debrief it tomorrow have a great rest of your day uh yeah it's youtube it'll, it'll be on the topkin options uh youtube uh channel and you can go watch some of my other videos here make sure you su subscribe to the uh our topkin options youtube channel because i put out my daily s sit reps and uh, market intel briefs on here as well so there you go paste that is our uh youtube channel all right guys have a great rest of your day happy hunting make sure you hedge god bless Namaste and fights on. I'll talk to you guys later. Welcome aboard.